So today we, we start kind of with the uh, first part of the uh, project team, but it focuses a little bit more on the what what is in the literature termed uh, knowledge management profession. And I, I just touch on it briefly because uh, in my other module that you will have with me too, I actually go in a lot of detail about knowledge management. So here I will have a very pragmatic uh, definition, but I tell you as well why this trend actually emerges and where it's coming from, if it's global or just a local thing. Yeah, th this is another question. And what it has as an impact as a society as well. And because that, that is often uh, um, a little bit left out of the site, especially as project manager, quite easy to, to lose uh, contact with the ground, how it impacts as well on, on your surrounding environment. So let's get started. Uh, uh, overview, okay, well, uh, actually, yeah, th this is more or less, less it. The, the context of the project-oriented society, this is a super exciting uh, uh, discovery because we are living it. Yeah? So if you compare how you are living to like one or two generations before, so ask your parents or your grandparents, was well, very different. It's exciting, yeah. So, uh, um, so let, let's have a look at what what that actually means. The context of the project-oriented society. So, first of all, it is a trend uh, um, that that we are living in the project-oriented society, and it's a global trend. Well, what do you think that means? What well, what is project-oriented society? Let's think about it. I, I will contrast it, and I hope my contrast will make sense of that. So in the past, you started, you, you went to school, maybe, yeah? you, you went on an apprenticeship, you got a trade. So you may went to an educational institution and uh, got a job. And then you, you kind of did that job, more or less for life. Is that still what we're doing today? So, I see the apprentice sites probably going away in the UK, definitely. It's not as many apprentices that's coming in as graduates now. Okay, graduates. Yeah. And, and what does that mean? So, um, uh, so they are not trained into the job? But uh, they've had academic, uh, but not, uh, not hands on, not actually. Yeah. Um, not seen it on site, for instance. Here. Yeah. So basically, uh, um, it's an emphasis on the intellectual mind. Yeah. So if, if you basically develop your intellectual skills, you can imagine how you can do something, and that means that you're very likely to practice it as well. After a little bit tinkle, tinkling around, yeah, and, and like working your head uh, in different ways how it could work, yeah, you, you will find a way of doing it. This is the idea. Apprenticeships was very hands-on. So somebody showed you how to do something, you didn't have to think, you were just trying to do it the same way. Yeah? Now, but I, I kind of emphasize that at the kind of image uh, level. Yeah? So people, uh, um, sorry, image uh, uh, identification, really. Yeah? So um, people became uh, uh, like a particular role in society. Do we still stick with that? Do we stick to one role? No? So what, what happens now? Yeah, multitask is maybe uh, the, the wrong emphasis. We, we still have those roles, but uh, we move on from role to role. Yeah? So you may start uh, um, as a site engineer. You, you may start working on a construction site as a, a bricklayer, maybe as a health and safety officer, or, or the, the uh, um, sustainability manager, yeah? so, something like that. And then uh, you, th this is your initial role, and then you maybe move into a new role. And it doesn't take as long as it used to take. Yeah, in the past, uh, you, you would have maybe um, career shifts uh, um, every 10 to 15 years. Now, how, how often do you have it? Promotions? I, I just told you I got the promotion by, by default. Yeah, uh, This is uh, uh, certainly something I didn't apply for. But uh, mm -hmm. it's <laughs> yeah, so uh, um, what, what, how often uh, do we get uh, a new role? A new job. New job, new role. Three, 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 years. Yeah. In, in your job, now, now be a little bit more precise, did you have over the three to five years the same role or, or are there already additives and, and more responsibilities? Is there already a shift? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, 
So in, in, in other words, we have already like kind of uh, put ourselves into a project society. Yeah? You, you are now for one project, you have that role. For the next project, you need to have a maybe fitting role to fit the project. Yeah? So this, this is fascinating. What else do we have with the project? There, there, there are cool things as well to a project. We will come to that in a second. How, how often ca can you see kind of the changes? Like, uh, how, how would you witness if you are doing progress? Did you have a masterpiece at the end? So again, a traditional apprenticeship. After 20 years of hard training, being a journeyman, and having been in the trades for years and traveled the world to see different ways of doing it, you finally make your masterpiece after 20 years. And then another master comes and says, like, yes. That is a masterpiece. Or, or if, if you had tough luck, yeah, uh, um, for example, in violins, there's a famous case of Stravinsky, who, who then, uh, uh, I don't know if that's the right name, I may have mixed up the name, never mind, but the violinist master was like, after 20 years, no, this is not a masterpiece, you have to try harder, come back in 10 years. Yeah. So, and, and that, 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 that was it, you know, you were like, oh no, I have to travel my own and have to try harder. Yeah, but uh, well, when do we see nowadays this? Is it still tw 20 years? So wh when do you see if you have done all right? Yeah, yeah, this is it. Yeah, after your task is done, yeah, it either works or it doesn't work. You have direct feedback. Yeah? And then sometimes you see it directly in your account as well. Yeah? So you, you have the return on your investment straight away. It, it accelerates. Yeah? It accelerates life. So this is quite press-taking. Actually, I've broken it down on the following slides. But uh, um, now, uh, um, we, we see it as well. Projects and programs have become drivers over delivering strategic and objective changes. Um, we, we do it even in, in uh, uh, families now. Can, can you relate to that? Do you have projects and programs in your family? I suggest me again. I, I live a uh, weird life, so uh, it, it can happen you know, that, that I live differently there. But uh, do you have projects or programs in your life? Well, the kids, you kind of reward them if they do things and okay. uh, yeah. get to the next stage or the, the, um, like a swimming bar to get the next swimming badge, it's like, you know, your reward goes with it, so it's yeah. there's always stages of you know, they can kind of see where they're going next. Yeah, but uh, th this is a powerful one, yeah? So this is actually a social construct, yeah? It's uh, rewarding uh, mechanisms, yeah, for projectifying your life already. You're right, yeah? It's, it's first uh, they can swim more than 20 meters. Yeah, so in other words, if they drift off uh, in the ocean and as a parent you didn't pay a lot of... I'm oh, sorry, I shouldn't make it a judgment. The, uh, it's, so your, your children have drifted with the current a little bit and you're like, hey, come back! With 20 meters they still come back, yeah? And then if they have that batch and uh, um, it's more than 20 meters, then you should consider swimming a little bit towards them too. Yeah? So th this would be kind of the trade-off. Yeah? So you, you uh, create accountabilities. I don't think that the children realize that. I, I don't think you, you, you should test it that way. Yeah? That, that would be a little bit drastic. But at least uh, uh, those, those are the merits. Are there other projects? Yeah, like um, getting everyone to have a minimum of a master's degree. No, uh, I would have been a lot uh, broader even, yeah, so you're spot on, yeah. So it's education. Yeah? You, you have now a program of education you're going through, yeah, and, and then afterwards you're finished. Yeah? You, you may have noticed this with learning, it's not the same. I remember from myself, when I learned drawing, I was very slow. It took me three years before I, I kind of finished uh, um, the technique, yeah? whilst other people had it already after a year. I was slow in learning drawing, yeah. But uh, um, so learning is as well something that, that does not necessarily uh, resonate the time frames. But we, we have those programs now yeah, that, that kind of pull us through the education. Yeah? This, this is quite an interesting one. Yeah? That, that is what this trend means. Yeah? And it's powerful. Yeah? How, how long did it take in the past to become a well-read uh, scholar or intellectual? I take guesses. Okay, but you, you are in education already more than years, so uh, um, you are then already on a far good scholarship side. 40? 40, yeah. Other guesses? 40 is a very good high uh, uh, guess, yeah? So you, you said yes, this is anti use. Could, could be 100 years, could be two. 
I always kind of viewed it as like, well, way back, it was kind of the person towards the end of their career. They were recognised for the for the whole career, and that's when they were sort of judged to be. Yeah. That, that is actually where I wanted to arrive, but uh, all the answers were good as well. You, you, you kind of were recognized after you kind of completed your profession, and you stepped away and people were t willing to talk to you. you. You may notice as well that people that kind of had as well their career to an end and nobody wanted to talk to them, they, they were normally not the scholars, although they had great stories. Yeah? This is a pity in literature. Yeah? You, you will see that a lot of the... Uh, villains of the time, yeah, that, that really mucked it up, that got it really wrong. They, they wrote wonderful books and nobody's reading them. Yeah, because they, they were generally like, oh, he did get it very wrong, so maybe we shouldn't read. There are stuff that, that may like uh, have an impact on me and I do it wrong too. Yeah, but that, that is where the great lessons are to be learned. Yeah, but um, it, it's, a, it's a fascinating one. Yeah? And, and we change as well how we live. Yeah? My mom, every Christmas, comes, comes kind of with her program of, of things, Robert, you should eat healthier, and uh, um, don't, don't eat so much meat, and uh, um, exercise more, and uh, um, yeah, th things like that. Yeah, they, they are all kind of goals yeah, to be set, to be achieved, hopefully to the next meeting when I meet her, yeah, and then she's very happy. Oh, nice, you, you achieved the eat less meat, or something like that. Actually, I don't eat that much meat, but uh, that's a different topic. Yeah, but uh, you, you get the idea. Yeah, so we communicate this way that way. Now, it uh, uh, supports as well a relatively high number of project-oriented or, uh, um, organizations. So um, we, we, we have said actually kind of around us, we, we have shifted there. Uh, we, we don't recruit somebody for life anymore. We still do that in a few countries. This, uh, uh, this is a question for you. Do you know a company where you just get employed and you stay with the company for life? No? C civil service, good example. Yeah, or oh, public sector as well. Yeah. No. Not, not anymore. Is it as well project based? Yeah, no, <coughs> people used to say it was a job for life, <coughs> like education and things like that. Um, but I think with obviously cutbacks, austerity measures, you can I don't think there is a job for life. Okay, so you're even skeptical on <coughs> on those sides, huh? I think I've, I've just I've seen it happen. I know yeah. people who work in the local authority been here 20 years and then <coughs> um, maybe done them. Okay. So oh, wow. I, I didn't know that the public service is actually... Oh, yeah, I, I thought you get always reassigned to... No, to no, no, there's a lot, there's a lot maybe done a couple of years ago. Okay, that's just fascinating. Uh, yeah, well, it depends on the position a lot. But yeah. Yeah, but it's fascinating. Yeah? So you, you uh, have some, uh, um, there are some cultures that go, went the opposite. So Japan, for example, or as well as South Korea, you go with a company, it's, it's, they even call it, you are in bed with a company. They, they will look after you, no matter what. If you really mess it up, you, you may be the uh, receptionist and, and the guy that, that leaves people in. Yeah? But uh, um, no, again, I'm degrading here. This is a fine job. Yeah? I, I would not. Uh, uh, so uh, in other words, they, they will look after you, no matter what. Yeah? So it's a life commitment. And it's, it's quite terrifying. The people work there as well to their 80s and the 90s. Yeah, and they're, they're still fully committed. If you ask them, they, they're still in it. Yeah. But it's similar. There, there were a lot of big uh, uh, companies, uh, multinational conglomerates that have uh, um, a, a long tradition. They often have these cultures too. Yeah. So like a big car, like Nissan, Hitachi, all, yeah. all those sort of... Yeah, uh, um, so Japan, uh, uh, Nissan is a good example, Toyota, you, you name it, uh, um, but especially as well, uh, um, the, the really big conglomerates in Japan, they, they all basically are behind so it. So what happens to the young people? But very difficult to come in. Coming in the bottom. So you, you have a high unemployment or, or high difficulty to find a job. So one, once you're in that company, this is you kind of done, and then you can move in the company. Yeah. Is, that, is that used as a... Is the, is the salaries kept low as a kind of threat, or uh, is, it, is it sort of like, yeah, here now, so be thankful? Or, or um, it, well, uh, this, this is interesting. So Japan uh, um, has a very high pay, actually. Uh, um, it's, uh, Japan is one of the high production, uh, high wage production countries. So you wouldn't do there anything, uh, manufacture anything that is of low value. Um, whilst in South Korea, you are the medium medium wage. So it, it's a uh, um, higher end, but uh, um, at the bottom, it's a higher end. And uh, um, it's, it's the other way around. You have a strong social system, 
So you get unemployment money, but many people don't claim it. They rather live with their family and hide it because you lose face. So if, if you are seen to go on benefits, this is a, um, a again it has to do with identity. Yeah. So you you want to have that step in the company, and in those uh, um, uh, cultural uh, conglomerates uh, or, or uh, um, regional uh, um, confines, you still find this uh, uh, culture embraced. And it brings a lot of uh, struggle on either side. Yeah? It, it, it means as well, if you identify so much, we, we talked about retirement age. Japan has retirement age uh, 58 or something, but people stay on because they absolutely identify with it. Still with uh, um, 85, 90, they're still there. Yeah? And it's, it's a traumata for young people because they want to get in the company, but what, what shall they do? Yeah? So there's no job for them. So it's a, it's a very uh, surreal environment uh, uh, maybe for us. Yeah? But if, if you look at it, for them, our idea is very, uh, very surreal. Yeah? So I, either perspective has a very interesting spin to it. So what's the, <coughs> what's the company's view if they have a, a downturn in production? Do they then still... Oh, I see. The, um, well, uh, um, the, it's a pull system, so it's very direct. So you would just not have to come to work. But I mean, the benefit system carries you either way. Th this depends. You, you have to be actually careful there. So there's well sectors uh, in medium-sized enterprises where it has a huge knock-on effect. Uh, so uh, I know that in the hotel business there, there is uh, um, there are certain trades that kind of lose often the job but get redeployed straight away again. So uh, yeah, and then again they, they kind of earn. I mean, yeah, there there are a lot of oddities uh, with those systems. Uh, first of all, guaranteed housing, and that you can't just throw somebody out because they're not paying the rent or something like that. So there are a lot of uh, arrangements that kind of uh, um, filter that socially. Yeah? But it, it's, a, it's a very different system. Yeah? And, and if you look at it, uh, a lot of contracts are still built that way. So as well, I as an academic, uh, uh, I got like, I have a very strange contract. It's done by years and seniority, how many years I've spent in university. So it doesn't even matter uh, um, if I'm old or young. Uh, if, if I would have signed here on as a, a junior lecturer when I was 20, then I would be kind of uh, um, already by default at the highest pay grade in two years. Uh, so it's, it's 24 years. And then there, there's nowhere I can go. Yeah? Well, I can go then for different titles. As I indicated, there yeah, so a program leader and things like that is around. For, for putting on my badge catalog, but uh, um, there, there's nowhere else to go from there. No. So it, it, it has its dynamics. Yeah. Now there's a, another thing with a project-oriented society. Um, you need as well specific competences for managing of projects, programs, and portfolios. And uh, um, as well as an actor, you have to be uh, um, aware, as a knowledge worker, you have to kind of hold your own development in your hand where you want to be. Now, this is a huge responsibility. Yeah? If you want to be a project manager for building skyscrapers, don't accept all the jobs for garages only. Uh, this is a, I mean, it's still from a structural point. I, 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 I sympathize with that. But uh, um, you, you have to find a way of like starting to build houses too. Does that make sense? Yeah? So it creates a certain dynamic. You have to put yourself in the right uh, project as well to generate your portfolio. Yeah. And of course, then structures are in place for future uh, uh, to further develop these management competencies. So a lot of companies uh, on, on this end of the talk that we have today, um, we are talking more about managerial and design team. We have superb mechanisms. Actually, Great Britain, and as well, if you go in the Commonwealth or, or America, you will see it's the uh, best infrastructure ever. Yeah? But if, if you are on the specialist side, then you have to generate that yourself. And as a main contractor, you may want to consider of, uh, gener generating that yourself as well. Yeah? You may be so specialized that, there are, um, that you have to come up with your own support mechanism for your team and so forth. Yeah? OK, let's have a look at that. Uh, um, so individuals work more often in temporary organizations. This is uh, in work as well as in, in like a society. Um, a, another example that I had actually kind of written down, you, you will see it in my notes, is uh, um, so even as a family in the UK, if you have a, a, a newborn, oh, what, what do you do? 
If you have a new child, what do you want to do first? Like socially, project, organization-wise? Sell it. Celebrate. Celebrate, yeah. Celebrate is good, yeah. So first achievement, yeah. That's when you want to get the teenagers. Yeah, when you get a teenager, that's when you want to sell them. Okay. So okay, that that there we are. So that, that, that comes to consideration at a later end. But what 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 do you do? So you you have your child now. Did you do any projects? Or do you do, so I suppose the question is, do you raise your child just in your family? Do it traditional? So a uh, um, child is at home with a wife and the sisters and, and their 20 children. Or, or uh, um, do, you, do you actually kind of go out and, and uh, organize something? Do you mean like the long term? So, like the, the question is, the like, tra the traditionally, child. yeah, the, the caring and taking. Uh, the mother would stay with the, the yeah. child. Yeah, with the grandparents, and uh, you yeah. would have a big house, so you oh, would have okay. all in the house. So yeah. what, what do we do now? Well, you, you generally, you've got your own house before you, not always, but you, you generally have, have, have moved out into your own place and then have your own children. It's, you don't stay with your family. Yeah, so this support mechanism is falling away. So it's, it's uh, less likely in today's society that you have kind of your full family around as a support environment. Certainly not in the same home. And those that do, for them, if you ask them, it's a 50-50 answer. Oh, it's a nightmare. I wish the parents would move out there. Yeah? Uh, versus like, oh, I'm really glad that they can look after the children. So it's 50-50. It can go either way. Yeah? It depends on the culture, doesn't it? Um, because we we built house, houses um, for Indian families. Uh, and, and they'll they'll bring their parents, <coughs> so they'll sell the pit, one house and they'll sell two houses, put them together. And we we design and build a big a big property, and then the, the parents will have uh, a bathroom kitchen over that area, mm -hmm. and then when they go off to work, parents look after the after the kids. Okay, so the they they have integrated this, but how do we do this now? We have kind of thrown the family out. So now we were sitting, like you have a young child who is your wife, yeah, and, and uh, what, what do you do now? You drop them off at the parents or the grandparents' house when you go to work. Okay, so you still have the family, you just have basically just expanded the room. Yeah. Okay, okay. So you, you have basically made a little bit air between the rooms, which is fair enough. So two, two different buildings, yeah. What, what, what else? Daycare. So, yeah, exactly. You, you give it to somebody to look after. Now, what's fascinated me in the UK, in uh, um, the there are actually support groups, right? Where you kind of uh, meet other parents oh, yeah. that are in the yeah, same yeah, age, yeah. and then you kind of, um, I don't know how it works really, but uh, um, you basically throw a coin, and whoever loses gets all the children, and then the other parents kind of have a day off. Never seen that one. No? no. Okay, maybe that is like something uh, specific to my local environment. The, uh, um, but basically the idea is that uh, um, you kind of investigate time into a network to kind of get you through that time of the life. Yeah, so there's a toddler stage where you go to uh, music, children music or something like that. It got really, it got very complicated, so I didn't really uh, listen too carefully. But uh, I was very fascinated about the organization behind it because they organize in networks with strangers. All I could tell that those are complete strangers that they met at the random meeting where other people are with a little toddler. Yeah, and then you kind of set them up and, and bring them all over to that one house, stuff them in, and then leave, and, and pick them up at the end of the day. Yeah, so I was quite fascinated by that. But at the same time, yeah, they, they socialize, have music, so there are different events where basically parents uh, take us on board. Yeah? So very uh, impressive. Uh, so there you have again a like kind of project organization kind of compensating traditional structures. Yeah? But it's, it's still both exist, you're quite right. So family is still an option. Yeah? Uh, um, then uh, there, there's well other support. Uh, you can as well, uh, the, the commercial side would be having a nanny or, or um, an au pair. It's for free. Yeah? Normally you just have to house and feed them. No, I said that on camera. And, and pay them as well something. Yeah? So uh, it's, uh, oh, no, I'm just joking about that. Yeah, but uh, there are all kinds of, of hybrids of it. Yeah? But uh, th this is basically uh, how, how we have uh, uh, replaced it. Now, uh, um, with this, uh, we, we have moved as well. Uh, so trends for individuals to get temporary assignments on successes 
projects or programs. So this is for you too. Yeah? If, if you want to be a, a, a superstar in, in project and program management, you may too want to build a mega project. And you will see after that, people may want you on another mega project. It, it comes with a huge dilemma. It means that you often travel with a mega project. So uh, we, we have uh, actually a lot of past alumni students and uh, I, I'm, if, if you want, yeah, stay in contact afterwards. I'm always curious about it. But I see them that uh, um, they are at the moment in Hong Kong, yeah, building a big bridge there. Yeah? And uh, uh, they know already the next project is uh, somewhere in, oh, yeah, Ukraine. This is tough luck at the moment. But OK, yeah, but uh, the next big project is in Ukraine. Yeah, because that, that is where the mega projects are from that big major contractors. If, if you want to follow, it's very easy. It's uh, the French Bui construction. Yeah? So have a look at that. Or Skanska is the same. Yeah? If you're in their uh, mega project departments, this is where you're going. Yeah? It's a big contract. So then you become a project nomad. Yeah? You, you travel with the projects. If you're lucky, they're regional. They're around your locality. Yeah? How, how is it? Is it always that way? Are all the projects locally to you, where you're living? Um, in the UK, it's probably regional, because <coughs> we, we, we cover things. Uh, we cover, here in Newcastle, we cover Scotland, don't we? Leeds. So, so what you have is what, something like Inverness, or, or would that be too yeah, far? Yeah. No, well, it depends on the company, but we would cover Scotland until you fall off. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why there seems to be content with like Scotland as a country. I've noticed as well the NHS has like regional bases and one region is Scotland. So if, if you put that down, then yeah, you're often yeah okay. But uh, so uh, it's basically uh, organized regional. Yeah, so some some companies do that. Th this is then often to to support the family environment to to allow you as well to stay and have your uh, life where you are. That's often agreed. So. Uh, um, but what about other people? Is it common to stay in the same company or uh, in the same uh, place, region, with the same company? There's a friend I work with, <coughs> his son, uh, he's just been a headhunter to be a, a global director for a company. And they have a big emphasis on family time. Mm -hmm. So what they actually do, they fly him home on a Friday, wherever he happens to be working. So if he's in Texas, he gets flown home on a Friday. If he's in South Africa, he gets flown home on a Friday. Um, just to keep the core, because you understand how difficult it can be if you're constantly away from your family mm -hmm. as a bit of a nomad. Um, so that's a very strong structure they have in place. Mm -hmm. Get people home you know, each weekend, if, if possible. Sometimes it's not always possible. Mm -hmm. That's what they try to do. And that was one of the big things that mm -hmm. Persuaded to take take this job on, rather than two months in Texas, two months in South Africa, mm -hmm. and then suddenly the kids are 15 and you haven't, you haven't seen them grow. So there's a lot of there's a lot of companies now <coughs> putting a strong focus on on family time, on family. Time. So that, that's important. Mm -hmm. So in a way, th this is a reaction to this type of work. Yeah? So we, we see this that that there is a, a, str a, str a strong strive yeah, to to actually move with the jobs. But at the same time, they're a coping mechanism. Yeah? So you, you can ask for that as well. How, how's it for you? S same uh, uh, scenario? I suppose in some countries, there's still a lot of construction locally. But this, this is when you're lucky. Uh, um, how, how's it for you or, or your friends, your environment? Did you have to travel a lot? Or? Locally, traveling is too very difficult. So uh, a, a lot of traveling, or, or not so much? A lot of traveling. And is this then uh, compensated, or is that just expected? I think the ladies do it. Because, uh, probably uh, your site is like maybe three, four states away. Mm -hmm. you know, families, where you can't move the family. Because, or maybe you're actually working in the outskirts. Mm -hmm. but your family can't live in the outskirts with you, so basically just travel and come back on weekends. So you stay there during the week of work and then come back over the weekend. So it's a similar scenario, yeah? Do you um, for long term, like, like regional, like you said, okay, you don't want to do a project like in the northeast, mm -hmm. and the project is going to take like three years. Sometimes they move with their family, so they know they're going to be there for like three years. So. Yeah. But this was the same package that uh, we got in our company. 
So they would move your whole family. They, they would even compensate pay on top uh, to, to uh, um, so if, if your wife was earning something, you would get for the same contract period the, the pay automatically for, for the wife. And there's an assumption that they may not get a job. Right? And normally they match it as well with putting you in a particular house where they would pay rent and uh, so to compensate it. And then they would look as well for a school where your children can kind of continue the education that, that they had before. Yeah. So the, those are coping mechanisms. It's still uh, um, qu quite a difficult one. Yeah. And, and do people like this then to move? Uh, is this uh, perceived as good or? or well, uh, change is constant, but some people don't really like change. Mm -hmm. Don't like, you know, just, you know, there's always the fear of what you're going to meet in the new place, you know, how you're going to cope, but sometimes if you look at it, if you want to make progress in life, you definitely have to change location sometimes, like, meet new, you know, new challenges and just get on. Yeah. So th there's uh, always like kind of a negotiation going on as well, yeah, but uh, it's, it's uh, especially if you want to have like a career in certain uh, areas, this is kind of uh, um, demanded from you. Yeah, but project management, you can uh, uh, move as well between projects. Yeah, this is well a successful uh, um, career path if you want. Yeah, but then, then you may have to look across companies as well yeah, to, to kind of keep your options uh, locally where, where you want to be. Yeah, but this is possible too. Yeah, you, you wanted to add something else? Or? I, I think that probably has to do with uh, the generation. I think the younger generation uh, find it easier to move. Uh, they accept the challenge, but the much older generation don't have to move. Uh, as I said, the uh, uncertainty of the unknown. You like, maybe you go to your new job, you don't like the job, or something happens, you get fired, and you actually had your old job, so why move? Hmm. So how, how can we avoid that, that we have to travel every time? Where, where is it more travel intensive? Is it as well characteristic to the company maybe? Do we travel a lot in the public se sector if we work for like a regional uh, infrastructure ministry or something like that? I think that it depends on um, your position in the public structure. Right? Mm -hmm. If for instance you have to be like the director, you know, so most times you like have to do traveling to check out for the other branches are doing. Mm -hmm. Whether they're like something like um, let's say, uh, I don't know, to, like uh, I don't know what position to give you. But basically, in that locality and coordinating what's happening, it's mm -hmm. in that they have to travel. Yeah, so project managers, for example, uh, uh, here in the region, they they often have a regional agreement or local even. Uh, so you don't travel that far. Occasionally there are meetings where councils come together or where best practices discuss. That's kind of a one day away or, or a few days away, but you, you stay mostly local. Yeah, so um, th this is as well something where larger projects are doing. So smaller projects are often most in a locality. Yeah. And uh, it has a certain dynamic as well. We have uh, regional offices, but on the market as well, so the south of the it's got down the north. Yeah. So it, it's kind of even though your regional is like, oh, you'll only be covering sort of this sort of area. Suddenly so the market dictates, but yeah, but, but actually no, we're going to put you down there instead now, you know, so it's... Mm -hmm. Yeah, to, to have so you, you, you on the job as well. you regional office, but you've actually signed the same work anywhere in the area, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in particular if workloads dictated, as you're saying, yeah? so if, if there are the scales that they can't really compensate, but they have a lot of people that are available, then you would probably match it in an organization like that. But it shows you already that those companies operate at national and international level. Yeah? And uh, um, there, there come as well a lot of benefits with companies like that. Now, uh, I have a uh, um, question here for you. Which, which, uh, what do you think about Project nomads is, of course, this emphasis that you. What, what does a nomad do? What, what does he? Yeah, mm. travels and uh, um, is it just him or, or is it uh, her or, or is it? Family, cartoons. Yeah, everything. Yeah, the, the whole stuff comes with you. Uh, so that that is uh, uh, one. Uh, is this good or bad? It depends on the of the company. Yeah. So would you be, could you consider working for a company like that? Would be, okay, we have a little bit no? No, 
my, my wife's friend, her husband, he works uh, doing oil platforms, mm. and they've done Vancouver, wife and kids, Texas, um, UK, <coughs> now they're in Dubai, and then there's talk of somewhere else. Um, makes huge amounts of money, mm. and I think that's the big offset. She doesn't work, she lives like a princess. Um, <laughs> you know, um, I like the interpretation of the princess. Yeah. I think I think that's that, that for me, no, personally I like the I like to just be at home. But everybody everybody's different. If you don't want to do it, don't go. So you, you have said a very important thing. So um, as a normal it finds it's very difficult to, to identify where home is. Especially yeah, if you have travelled over 20, 25 years repeatedly, your children have grown up in other countries. For them, home is maybe in a different place to where it's emotionally for you. Yeah. Yeah? So that's a very powerful example, yeah? yeah. Okay, um, like our minister of going up here in Nigeria, mm -hmm. they always take people to other nations, like they are the friend of going to secondary school, he just came to Nigeria from Cameroon, mm -hmm. and now the parents are in Lebanon, so mm -hmm. they just keep taking them like that. And now he's schooling um, somewhere in Canada, and the parents are in Lebanon, so the sister is in Australia, so it's too scattered. Yeah. Okay, too, too scattered. So it yeah. takes away some privileges. <laughs> okay. The pay might be good, but it's not really about the pay. But uh, here, here we had already like a little bit uh, freelancer or, or mercenaries, yeah, because you, the family is not coming along, right? You you send them just to the to other places, maybe to neutral places to not have political issues. Yeah, but uh, um, Project Normals is really taking everything with you. Yeah. Good. Uh, other thoughts to it, Normals? So, can I ask question? When when you talk about taking everything with you. Yeah. Do you mean that if you're moving your company, you're not leaving anything behind, like uh, the branch? You're moving the whole company to the next place. No, no, this is a, a project worker. So uh, basically, uh, um, if you have a project now, and uh, um, Nigeria won the contract to build a new uh, railing from, well, where shall we send you? Maybe somewhere uh, uh, in, in the north of, of Mongolia, yeah, to make it exciting. Yeah, uh, they, they offer you now to, to move your whole family, uh, um, to even like maybe sell your house uh, um, to compensate you for that, or, or keep it and maybe rent it out, or just keep it like that, and, and move your whole family uh, with you to Mongolia for the wonderful five to seven years contract. Yeah? So this is kind of what the project Nomads is, is about as a phenomenon. Yeah. <coughs> Other thoughts? Good, bad? Um, I think uh, based on our own culture, sometimes when they are doing that, you know, you don't make provisions for for some financial incentives. Mm -hmm. Like if you want to go spend Christmas in Nigeria with your extended family, the bill is all yours, the careless. So, so you are going to interact with the extended family when they are taking to far places. It is next to you to deal with because they believe you've taken your nuclear family already. So. Any other you are spot on. So uh, um, actually, keeping the relations yeah, as a project nomad to extended family or as well friends, you know, the environment that you grew up in, is incredibly difficult. Yeah? So th this is certainly something that is under huge constraint. Now uh, your support network will be challenged. So normally companies do compensate for that. Yeah. Okay, then then we have another phenomenon. So this is one. Yeah, and you maybe expect that you, you have as well signed a contract, it seems, that, that kind of goes in that direction. Yeah, uh, um, although it's not that, uh, I don't think they would move your family, would they? Or is that as well possible? Uh, well, um, probably not, because the duration of the projects are beyond being. Yeah. Okay. Probably wouldn't. Yeah. So then you, you would probably more qualify as a knowledge worker. Yeah, you, you ask for particular pieces of uh, insight, experience, uh, um, yeah, competences normally uh, um, to be contributing to a particular piece of work. So here you are being maybe flown in to do a particular job. You may do it from the distance. Uh, you, you do a particular piece work that you're submitting a task. Good or a bad knowledge worker? And are you doing it already or not?
Good. Yeah. What, what, what is the knowledge worker? So, uh, uh, what, what do you think is good about it? Okay, um, I'll use my internship days as an example. Mm -hmm. The project manager was um, from Romania, mm -hmm. so he was basically like a knowledge worker. Mm -hmm. He has been with the company though, but you know, because of the size of the project, we got him away from Romania, you know, to a stern project, and he had um, time to like often travel, and, you know, back to Romania for. Very good. So this paid in dollars. So yeah. So yeah. this seems to be as uh, uh, African thing. I don't know why, <laughs> but uh, there's a currency thing that doesn't really match up. You normally don't seem to get paid in the local currency for some reason. But uh, yeah, so it's, it's quite interesting. Yeah? So but knowledge worker, um, you you can build your expertise. You you travel, but by yourself for the pieces of works you are committing to to the project. Now, you, you have already as well highlighted the drawbacks, so this is basically where you are responsible for your own travel, you get normally paid a lot more. Uh, you, you normally define as well your time, uh, terms and conditions and where your value is generated. Yeah? This is quite interesting, actually. So if you have it in uh, project management, you have often professionals that are uh, kind of trained on particular aspects that they're contributing. Yeah? Arguably self-motivated. Which is interesting. Now we have this where the freelancers, uh, uh, what, what is that? Freelancer? That, that is even more in the direction of the knowledge worker. Short term contract. Yeah. Yeah, piecework, literally. Yeah, you, you have a task like, uh, um, for example, do a design, uh, uh, do an architectural design, or, or do the structural design, all, all those wonderful terms, yeah. This, this can be, for example, the uh, freelancers. What about mercenaries? Cheers, the dollar. <coughs> so that, that is the uh, same thing, actually. Yeah. That, 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 uh, who, who may call? Would you call yourself a mercenary? Why not? The, yeah. Um, there's passion behind what we're doing. Why are we not doing for the money? We're only doing because we want to do it. Yeah. So who may call a uh, project manager a mercenary? Someone who go anywhere, do anything, don't really care what they're doing as long as they're getting good good money off it. Well, I would say a freelancer, you know, maybe he's you're getting paid more, but you probably still you still have a bit of an interest in what you're doing. Yeah. Um, so here you have a strong identity. Yeah. Here you do what's needed for the money. Yeah. And normally you are being called that from the outside, or people think you are not doing the right thing. I know that was only written in the contract, yeah, and I, I can see that you make here the highest cut of the money you can make, but that is not the right thing. Yeah, that's a plea as well in, in the mercenaries uh, 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 syllabus. But uh, um, if you're interested, those are actually the key words. Yeah, if, you're, if you're interested in this uh, phenomena, have a look at it. Yeah? Is, that, is it not more that it's they're associated with the jobs that no one else wants to do? Maybe as well, yeah? C could be? Yeah. Three months Three months at a time, £12,000 a month. So you're in a war zone. Pipeline in Siberia. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there are many jobs like that. Yeah. But just, just, that's fascinating, right? Pipelines in Siberia? Yeah. Oh, so much potential. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, and indifferent. Now, uh, um, recogni uh, recognizing of competences becomes an issue even for project personnel belonging to permanently to project organizations. So, how do you account actually for that job? Yeah, with a freelancer, you're trying to protect yourself by identity. This is a job that I can do. Knowledge worker becomes tricky. You're evaluated on success. Project nomads, all that matters is as well succeeding in the project. Mercenaries, as well, again, just success. Yeah, it's output oriented. So we have a certain dilemma here. And uh, um, the, yeah, the, the drawback, it gets actually quite dark a little bit. But uh, individual needs to shape their professional development to keep employment. So you are, in those scenarios, if you go for those markets, you have to sell yourself as well and show how you're actually developing your own uh, skills. Yeah? 
we, we do that with experience. You, you kind of uh, show that you have worked on that project, what your goals were, and you build your kind of competence uh, portfolio. If, if you do that, you will see you get headhunted was the term. People will approach you to actually uh, uh, put your CV forward for future jobs. Yeah? It's, a, it's a very uh, lucrative business. Now, the primary, uh, primary uh, function um, Yeah, with, uh, um, if, if you look at the organization, actually, we're underlining here, this uh, um, project uh, projectification as well, is uh, um, primary function only undertakes projects for specific change or an occasion. So you're as well brought in for this project. And uh, a classic HRM function, resource allocation to the project, uh, um, normally slightly obsolete. Yeah? So, um, in, in the past, we, we had, of course, um, in, in functional settings, yeah, if you were an engineering company and you, you built your own cars, you, you would have your HR department that supports you, that gets you your team members. And uh, you were there as well as a project manager to, to develop your team, yeah, or, or work with different team members, kind of figure out what your team brings. Yeah. But uh, as we already said, we, we have moved a little bit away from that functional side, so we work now as well as knowledge workers. Now, uh, um, with that, uh, we, we come to the project-oriented, where majority of business activity uh, is project-based. Yeah? Uh, with this, you have, so what, what, what can be project-based be? So you, you can have in a, a functional organization as well change projects uh, that, that have kind of strategic value where, where you change how you're doing things. But project-oriented really mind, means that either you do your business by project for project, or your main operation is services to projects. Does it make sense? So you, this is probably like uh, what some of you are experiencing. You provide a particular service in your permanent kind of functional organization, but to projects. Yeah? So you, you uh, um, will be mostly probably based and your experience will come from projects. Yeah? Although your, your company runs a service. I hope that makes sense. Uh, um, the present and future resources requirements of the organizations are uncertain. Yeah, so it means as well, uh, um, if, if you're committed to the company, your role may change. Yeah. And uh, people follow careers uh, other than climbing the ladder up the functional silo. So um, again, the, what, what is this metaphor? What is climbing the ladder of the functional silo? What, what is that? It's a little bit what I talked about here in this university. So I started as a PhD student. This is kind of the entry stage. Then you, then you become a pop Just when you have the PhD, you are already postdoc. It's, it's heartbreaking. I never knew when I was a doctor or something like that. But then you, you straight move on to lecturer. Yeah? Then you become a senior lecturer. And then you have like managerial roles that you then can take up like a program leader, program director then head of department, then dean and associate dean, then, no, other way around, dean, associate dean, dean, and then we have an executive dean, and then vice president. So this could be, for example, climbing the silo and the managerial side. But then academically, uh, uh, in my department, I could go from senior lecturer for reader for professor. Yeah? Does that make sense? And I would be still where I'm in my department just having intensified what I'm doing. So do, do we have that as well in companies, silos, functional silos? What, what could that be? In different disciplines, like a multidiscipline company, you would have people to sort of move up in, yeah. more of the, in an engineering role, but you know, you're not like overall of the company. Yeah. Similar sort of thing, I suppose. Yeah. So, uh, um, typical example. Engineer, chief engineer, principal. Yeah. So, uh, in engineering, you may come in as a technician or, or apprentice, yeah, and then uh, uh, work a while as a um, kind of technician engineer, remit physically on on the uh, on the machines or, or on the assembly, something like that, construction, yeah, or, or as well uh, fabric design or drawings, and then you decide to uh, uh, maybe do an engineering degree. Uh, qualification and to learn the principles and then you start designing or, or 
you could go as well into sales. So this would stick to, to a side of me. Uh, if you are in a service company with project management, the example was very good, yeah? you may start as a junior project manager, become senior project manager, you may look after a few projects, being the uh, director from the uh, project management office that supports a, a group of projects, and then at some point you may be the director of projects or something like that, uh, or managing director, who knows. Yeah? Uh, uh, and that would be again a little bit the silo idea. Yeah? But does that make sense? Do we still do that? Do we do that? So some people not, so this is good. Some people are, as I said at the beginning, yeah, so careers have changed a little bit. Right? This is now as well quite common in project management to go from one job to the next in another one, yeah, because you want to have certain projects that you're working on. Yeah? But this differs. So we are kind of at 40% with that at the moment. So it's quite popular. A lot of people do that. People not, may not have uh, um, uh, uh, the functional home to belong to. This is another one. We have this well project uh, um, where we, of course, work on them, and we may not be experts in the technical details. So you may be uh, um, a project manager for car manufacturing, and you haven't studied automotive, or you haven't been a mechanic on. Uh, um, Automotive uh, and, and cars or, or trucks or something like that before. Uh, so we, we have to sort of that shift. Uh, so c clearly you are not brought in then to kind of enforce the technical detail. You know, this, this is a safe bet. Yeah? Also, it would be interesting to do that too. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I would like to, do, to see that actually. So um, with this, uh, um, you have uncertain requirements. So you uh, um, grade the job, not the person. Uh, um, work well on project and let them uh, define the job around them. Um, th this is very, so this is kind of guidelines for a manager. Yeah? So if, if you have knowledge workers, um, let them really define like what they can bring to the table. There are often uh, um, characters and skills that you may not be aware of, yeah, that are typical to the industry. Uh, project bits as uh, employment um, mechanisms. Yeah? So um, this is again the chestnut of, of recruiting for the project. It's, it's very risk averse yeah, and very cost efficient, but it, it brought the draw drawbacks as well that we discussed. Then you have as well something that, that I haven't yet written, but I want to write it. So this is a paper I tried to write actually for the past year. It's a competence spiral versus a spiral career. Uh, um, so bad news, uh, no comfortable certainty for clear career paths, but the good news, more varied and more interesting career. Each project as a learning opportunity. Uh, so if you identify yourself as a learner and you build it to uh, um, as well develop your profile, you, you can work as well on the mega project. And uh, um, that is, again, yeah, where, where you have kind of the fee that, that you have, and then the pro bono. Yeah? And uh, if, if you look at the uh, frames that you're in, those, those are very, uh, um, very uh, interesting uh, scenarios. Uh, um, and and they're, they're very profitable. Yeah? Uh, um, with this comes as well, uh, what I wanted to say about the competence spiral is you narrow yourself down. You become a specialist. First, you may become a specialist for managing a big, complicated construction projects. If you then go down something like I did, uh, I was a specialist in building uh, industrial plants for manufacturing for food processing. Yeah? And that gets more and more narrow. If, if, if I then become more popular uh, outside of PepsiCo, I would have been like even more narrowed down, yeah? maybe for potato processing, yeah? for starch-related processing. So you become more and more an expert. Yeah? And more and more profitable. Yeah? So your fee goes as well up with it, because if people have you, you have seen all the risks that can appear from your wisdom of mistakes that you have done in the past. No, I didn't say that. But, uh, um, yeah, the, but uh, that's interesting. Yeah? You, you have learned basically from project to project. That, that is the currency that you have. So currently, uh, um, what, what yeah, you will see in mega projects, power plants is a huge pull. Infrastructure projects, those are the big uh, uh, hot topics at the moment. We, we don't have like uh, uh, people that can go into that. But we discussed as well, what comes along with that is the no home syndrome. So why is that? That is an emerging trend, yeah, phenomena, for a lot of uh, um, design-based uh, staff. It's at the same time a scenario that we discussed that is maybe not favorable for everybody. 
Yeah? So then you have the knowledge worker. You can do piece work in it if you're up for it. Yeah? So some companies do that already. You, you emphasize as well that you're kind of doing uh, work on particular parts of the project life cycle rather than the whole project life cycle. Yeah. Yeah? So this is a way uh, uh, of avoiding having to go with the project nomads. Yeah? Fr French large companies seem to go the nomads way. Uh, they send them there for the whole project. That's fascinating. Seeing a bridge, uh, uh, I think, is it to Macau, what they're building at the moment? Macau and, and Hong Kong, I think they built a massive bridge at the moment, 30 kilometer. Big, big, yeah? the, uh, have you heard of that? So it's, it's a massive project. And, and uh, uh, one of our past students is like, uh, um, is a project manager for Buick there. And it's, it's massive. So he kind of sees, this, uh, sees the project from uh, scratch through to the end. Uh, it's, a, it's a fascinating project. And the uh, stuff that goes on around it is amazing. Yeah. So, uh, um, yeah. Now, we, we had already a touch a little bit on, on organizations, but I wanted to kind of uh, uh, bring in at that point as well where, where we are actually with organizations. So we will have to step a little bit away and look as well uh, to, to arrive at motivation next week yeah, uh, at the organizational underlinings. So we had culture already. We, we have a little bit as well kind of structural setup. We actually just talked about that, and, and we will make that more concrete with examples that we can discuss. I think we will produce pens. That, that is an easy thing to do. The other one is toast, but toast is not so cool. P pens or toast? What, what is better? Toast is kind of a product for consumption. It's not so cool. A pen you, you can carry around and draw with, right? That is better. So, OK, let that on. We will do a pen. But let us first understand a little bit the, the uh, point of an organization. What, what is an organization to you before you look at the uh, um, uh, uh, kind of uh, um, definition that I have here. What, what is an organization for you? A body made up of units that are organized. Okay, and so you go for the literal meaning, yeah? Uh, um, some kind of organization, order, yeah? so pattern uh, uh, aligned in a way. So not a random grouping would be the opposite, yeah? So, okay, yeah? You can actually have a system, this one where yeah, hierarchy. Yeah, Link linking. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Here, here we are talking. So, uh, uh, direct and indirect. What, what's the difference? Oh, okay. You you go already for the soft. Uh, yeah, yeah. Control power. Uh, uh, yeah, very good. So th th those are, um, and, and you said that that is the indirect, yeah, or uh, probably informal. Yeah, Th yeah. this is uh, um, often w what's not so tangible, yeah, and and uh, um, it's mechanism that we have as well as a playground again, uh, and, and the preferred style that you want to go with. Now uh, um, I went here for literature definition, of course. So organizations are individuals and groups. Uh, interact with formal structure. Uh, structure is created by management to establish relationships between individuals and groups, to provide order and systems, and to direct efforts to carry out goal-seeking activities. Now, this is already quite project-specific, as you can probably see, because we have that roles. Yeah. Whilst in some organizations, it may be just you, you get a, a role accounted, and, and you're kind of part of a structure and, and do your contribution there. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, now, um, Buchan and Huchipchinski kind of uh, refined that a little bit. They, they pointed out an organization is a social arrangement for achieving controlled performance in pursuit of collective goals. So they have as well pointed out that uh, um, here, uh, um, bringing people just in, if they don't buy into the goal and, or, or don't, don't have actually um, any reason of like striving towards it, you are in an ambiguous undertaking. Yeah? So, um, and, and this can be uh, pursued with different strategies. Now, uh, um, particularly the social constructed notion is uh, very, in, uh, is, is actually of a sense for us in the project level, because normally we, we discussed it already, we, we have recruitment arrangements where we get given a team. So let, let's have a look actually at that. So organizations are socially constructed realities. So this is interesting, yeah? we, we, we construct a reality. 
I, I just tried to convince you of the phenomena of the nomads. Yeah, uh, li living example here. Yeah? So I have traveled more, more or less around as a complete uh, uh, thing. Yeah? Uh, um, uh, that rather being defined by the structures, rules, and regulations, they are constructed as, as uh, much in the heads and minds of their members and are strongly related to members' self concept. So, uh, um, like what I think of myself, where, where do I end, where, where do I begin, and uh, identity as well, what you identify with. Yeah? Now, th this is extremely powerful, yeah? Um, yeah. And, and this is as well where kind of understanding the organizational culture comes in. Now, what, what does it mean? Th this has, of course, as well a time dimension, and, and this is a very powerful one. This means as well, depending on where I have, so if, if I go now with my self concept, yeah, I, I have worked in, in certain ways, uh, first in Germany, then in Spain, then in South Africa, actually a lot about around Africa, a little bit Middle East. And then now here, a little bit America as well. And it, it has kind of established ways of, of how I view legitimateness of, of working together. Yeah? And nonetheless, here we are, all with a different background, and we find again a way of working together. Yeah? Th this is a fascinating bit. Yeah? So we do create here a shared reality, although we had very different experiences uh, uh, before. And luckily, it doesn't come to conflicts. No, no chairs yet flying, and, and no burning tables. That's why I'm very happy about this. Uh, so, so, so far, we are doing great. Yeah. This, this may come at a later point. No, I'm just joking. Uh, I hope not. Yeah. This would be terrifying for me. Yeah. But uh, um, so, uh, this is a, a fascinating thing. Yeah. Is, is this uh, uh, important for us? What, what do you think? <coughs> I mean, we, we can make it. We, we can go back a step and maybe think about implication. So we, we have the formal structures again. Yeah, organization is made up of formal structures, and uh, um, then as well kind of the social arrangements, which we could call informal. Yeah. So what what is formal structures that we have in an organization? So if we have a project. Yeah, it, it could be. So uh, um, you, you could uh, uh, take like, uh, um, yeah, I, I would, I mean, I see your hierarchy point. Yeah? So uh, um, I, let, let's uh, um, translate that maybe in a more functional way of looking at organizing because we are trying to do something. <laughs> So we may have assigned who is the decision maker. Yeah? We, we may have uh, people that are uh, um, assigned to evaluate and give the best information from their role to us. Yeah? And then uh, we, we may have people physically doing something. It may be all the same person. Does that make sense? Yeah? So uh, um, making decisions is here, uh, um, pushing the buttons, communicating. Th those are all kind of aspects yeah? that, that you may perceive what, what a hierarchy dictates. Yeah? It's an organizational order of how we do things. Are, are you with me? Yeah? Now, we, we may as well have uh, um, physical aspects. Yeah? We may have agreed on a construction site, for example. Yeah? Or, or shall we build a tunnel? We, uh, we, okay. well, uh, we go with the construction site. So, uh, um, the, so we, we have like kind of maybe fenced it off, and, and we have kind of like uh, um, started like uh, um, pointing out that this is our construction site. Yeah? And then you, you may have certain things. You may have a portal cabin where, where you store like drawings if, if you need them, yeah? or your iPads uh, um, if you are going with virtual uh, um, uh, kind of drawings, or, or like the augmented reality glasses if you really want to push it uh, in that direction. Yeah? Um, which, which should be up to date, because if you walk with this and there's a hole which is not yet there, this is extremely dangerous. I'm just pointing it out. Yeah? But uh, um, th this is basically where it comes in. Yeah? So, so those are maybe uh, physical aspects that create this value reality. But then you have a setup. Yeah? You, you know that uh, one person is uh, accountable 
for deciding if this stuff should be on site or not. Maybe the site manager, yeah, saying like, okay, the crane goes there, it's in the plan, he's enforcing it basically, the decision has to be made that that is the best place to have it. Yeah? This would be kind of the same, yeah? Then uh, if, if the uh, carpenter turns up, yeah, is it, is it his time? Yeah, it is. And, and he gets kind of like a quick uh, um, talk, like wh where, where he can uh, put his material, where the stuff, uh, where his materials that he's using are basically stored. And uh, he may get, now this depends on country or, or setup of the working, he may get the equipment from the company or, or site manager, yeah, or, or he may bring his own material and equipment. And so this depends again. Now, uh, with this, we, we come then, if you want, to, to the soft side. And, and here, it's, it's really important to recognize that with this pre-existing experience, if we come into to a project, this is maybe invisible to us as a project manager. This is particularly true if you're traveling around the world. Did you see the issue? Yeah? You, you have just learned how the, the Germans do it, how the Spanish do it. And it's, it's slightly different. It's roughly the same. It looks kind of the same if it's finished. Yeah, but it, it's slightly different. Yeah? So this this is a dilemma. Now, uh, if, if you think about that, uh, um, it, it's, it becomes really important uh, to, to think about culture, yeah, because you, you look here as well at routine aspects that you are may looking for. So again, with the technical background in project management, you recognize the routines that you are after. But once you start working in like more global settings, yeah, where you're not the expert, this, well, let, let's think first about the implications. So if you have now the technical know-how and you work in a new environment where somebody has learned to do the same thing in a different way, you think like, hey, wait a minute, this is not how you should be doing this. Yeah? You, you will probably confront it as a project manager. Maybe not. Yeah? And that, that is where the uh, dilemma comes in. So this is why we have more and more moved towards a, a general application. Yeah? So you will see that as well when you move around. Uh, has anybody experienced that? That you had a job that, that kind of looked the same, but uh, done very differently? I mean, the simplest idea of thinking of is probably construction with different materials, right? Has, has, everybody, uh, has anybody seen a brick house being built? Yeah? It's, it's very straightforward, isn't it? Um, you, you kind of hope that at some point uh, there's a, a, a palette of bricks arriving. Yeah? If, if that is not there, this is normally a bad sign. Yeah? And uh, um, then, then you would have uh, um, brick layers as well arriving. Then you, you have somebody committed that uh, uh, goes for the mortar. This depends uh, how much you have invested. Yeah? So you may have like, a, um, yeah, w w what, what was your prefer preference? Uh, did you have like a, a kind of mortar mixer or, or a um, cement mixer or, or did they do it themselves? <coughs> yeah. So s small site uh, probably committed uh, doing it themselves, maybe with a small cubic meter mixer, yeah? but if you have a big site, it may get delivered. Silos yeah. themselves? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, actually this uh, uh, cost-wise, yeah, for every project manager, if you do the costing, uh, concrete and cements and mortars, if you can do that on site, you, you always cut off roughly 50% of the cost. Yeah. Uh, so it's very profitable. Uh, the, the, the most sufficient way, especially with concrete, the French, and I'm very impressed. They, they do everything. They bring even their own soil, uh, which was uh, um, something that nobody considered uh, possible doing. Uh, but uh, okay. Uh, but this is old, old chestnuts. Yeah? Uh, um, but uh, you, you get the idea. Yeah? So we have a certain uh, um, setup that you're looking for, especially if you have experience with it. Yeah, and that, that is kind of the routines you're expecting to happen. Yeah, you, you probably look out for it as well, subconsciously. Now you wonder if there's nobody on site, what's going on? Yeah. Okay, so with this, you, you come as well in, and people identify with that stuff. Yeah. If you ask anybody that works on a site like that, they, they will give you probably characteristics where you can tell like, oh, okay, they have worked a lot with brick, uh, or they, they have worked a lot with concrete, or, or as well woodwork, it doesn't really matter. They all have their own aspects, how they identify with the material and the interface they are working with. Yeah? For project manager, you may be fascinated by buildings, maybe by bridges. Yeah? The, uh, quite sad, but when I studied, uh, I think in my first year, 
uh, there was the opening of the Ödesund br uh, bridge. I don't know if it's the same word in, in English. Um, but it's a bridge that connects Copenhagen with Malmö in Sweden. And it's a very long bridge. It kind of starts even before that. And uh, they had finally completed it. And it was now able to, to allow shipping as well uh, through a new section. And uh, yeah, yeah, so that's not, that, that, that is a dark history. Yeah, but, uh, so uh, we, we were so fascinating that we waited for this day, and I was still studying. And it was Friday, and the seminars were over. And my friend and I jumped into the car, drove uh, uh, to Copenhagen from Berlin, yeah, which is uh, a fair drive. So you, with ambiguous driving, you can do it in three and a half hours, four hours. Yeah, But this is just driving. You don't stop. Yeah? And uh, th then you had this wonderful city, which has uh, cultural traditions to visit. Yeah, it's a wonderful city, Copenhagen. Now, we ignored it completely. We, we drove past it, uh, straight on the bridge, but stopped basically at the first parking space, where you can kind of see where the bridge starts. And, and you can see uh, the particular segments that they have used to anchor the bridge in, and the cables, how they have uh, pulled them up. So we were just adoring it and making photos uh, next to it as well. And then driving over, uh, kind of you have a middle bay, then had a closer look and, and looked at if, if you could shake it and you, you have to look. Uh, with bridges, always check if the railing is straight. This, this is where you can see if, if it worked or if it didn't work. Yeah, and and uh, you, you can see it as well, you have to look on the ground. If it's the same height, then you're, if it's parallel, then it's good. Yeah, and it was good. Yeah, so, and then we drove uh, three times back and forth. Uh, it's, it's uh, I think, 20 kilometers bridge yeah, altogether. And, and back and forth, full of adornment, yeah. And then, uh, um, yeah, then I think we got the takeaway from the petrol station and drove back to Berlin. Yeah, ignored uh, uh, all the possibilities, but you know, this this was our identity. We were so impressed by this bridge, and yeah? we had studied it before, and finally we had seen it. It felt as well good to drive over it. Yeah? So th this is how powerful it can be, yeah, with a concept of self, yeah, and and uh, as well the identity. And as a project manager, it's very likely to go that route too, yeah, just as a word of, of warning. And, and uh, um, preparedness. Yeah. Now, oh, sorry, uh, this didn't work. Oh. Now, uh, with this, you, you come kind of to uh, an organizational system. And we, we have already touched a little bit on this. So, um, the system identify, uh, identifies the main elements of most organizations and their functioning. The elements of the formal uh, subsystem include the organizational strategy. So this is uh, what, what you're actually setting out kind of to do. Yeah? Uh, um, so uh, um, you may want to build, uh, uh, what, what do we want to build? A tunnel, a building, work down. The, the uh, um, example in Ukraine is of course Chernobyl. Yeah? They are uh, rebuilding at the moment uh, the uh, nuclear power plant that had uh, um, disastrous uh, uh, wrong going. And they, they have to deal now with it because um, a nuclear power plant is a water cooling uh, system and it's uh, pressurized uh, water, so it's gas, uh, water in gas form. And that, that has exploded in Chernobyl, but uh, um, the material still radiates. So you still have basically the pressure being built up. And they could seal it with concrete for uh, um, kind of 50 years, all right, but uh, it, it gets, it, it comes to a time now where, where you kind of want to clean it up uh, because otherwise you just have a time bomb there. Yeah, so th this is what they're doing at the moment. This is again the uh, French, uh, it's both Skanska Bonnet and uh, Bouygues, and uh, um, they're, they're doing this at the moment. At the moment, building a big umbrella over it, and then uh, they take it apart with robots in between. It's a co super cool project. Yeah? So th their strategy is, of course, uh, to safely kind of uh, uh, reassemble. Uh, um, um, uh, uh, start no way, actually, I think they're just taking it down and then seal particular areas so that the uh, um, land can uh, be, uh, um, yeah, and what was it? So they have a filtering process, but basically they, they do it with new soil. So you mix it enough that you cannot really trace it anywhere, uh, any, anymore. Uh, this is our old strategy of construction. Yeah, if everybody knows it. You have uh, kind of a, a very badly poisoned ground soil. It's just a question of washing and mixing until it, it's uh, uh, in a decent scale that, that it's not poisoned anymore. And it works. Uh, you, you just have to be, uh, um, so this is all about uh, when material becomes poisoned actually for the human body. Uh, so you have to find a way to barely neutralize it. 
Now that is a strategy, but you have as well a formula subsystem. So the management, the uh, operations, the structure, we talked about that already. Uh, uh, management, why, why do I have twice management? Okay, now mind. Te technologies that you may use and, and the goals yeah, from the different contractors that are involved. You know, they may come in with particular targets. Now, uh, um, in the input for an organizational system, of course, is material and resources. And then we have the informal subsystem where now our leadership, culture, and politics come in. Yeah? And, and our power sits as well. Yeah? And, and the interface between those, so it, it works basically uh, uh, in both directions. If you have a certain uh, um, setup in the formal system, you have a particular strategy. Yeah, uh, uh, may it be the cheapest way of doing it, dangerous strategy for uh, um, uh, uh, Chernobyl. Yeah, they, they went for the safest bit. Safety was priority yeah, because it has such a big knock-on effect. So basically, they went not with the cheapest bit, but they went for, with the most sophisticated one. They had like very little risk exposure. That, that is one of the main bases of the one. That was still then second category cheapest price. I don't get me wrong. But uh, um, there was a certain framing here to allow a certain way of collaboration. Uh, they have as well learning partnerships with universities to actually find a way of, um, they haven't yet figured out to really uh, how to deal with the, uh, um, there as well, uh, yeah, condensed burning sticks is the German translation. That is not the right name, though. No, what, what do you call the uh, uh, compressed material that you use for, uh, like if you have compressed coal and you put it in your fireplace, what would you call that? Coal sticks? I'm, I'm just fishing here for an English word that doesn't make sense in English. Uh, I, I just realized that my German translation does not, does not work. Oh, okay. But did you not have compressed uh, uh, coal sticks? With blocks. Yeah. It, it's maybe more industrial use. I, I, I think I'm fishing here for the wrong terminology. But anyway, so uh, um, they have still not really figured out what to do basically uh, with uh, uh, waste materials. So the traditional answer is to, to put it in a container and, and basically store it to its uh, um, neutral. But uh, um, this is stuff where they have basically uh, organizational settings of support, of expertise. Now it's again the consultancy idea. Yeah? And, uh, this organizational system then has particular outputs. So there are organizational goals, achievements. This may be uh, uh, products. This may be services. Yeah? Th this may be what you do as a product manager as well. Uh, um, and aside of that, you, you have already like a soft touch to employee satisfaction and your own satisfaction too. Yeah? So for example, your leadership style that is imposed by the setting of the organization may not suit you. But we have a closer look at that actually uh, uh, in a second. Yeah, so the um, so simple dichotomies are, uh, are ask yourself if you are going with your children, if you don't have children, if you are going with your friends uh, um, to uh, um, the beach. Yeah, in, in Timos, I can recommend that. Yeah, it's a wonderful experience. Go go there and, and just ask yourself: Are you happy to kind of just go with the flow and take it as it comes, or would you like an agenda? I have a little bit of control on it too. Yeah, so so you you actually get the most out of the trip. Well, that, that is the question. Yeah. Are, are you with me? So there's one option of just jumping here in the metro. You you say to your friend, hey, let's meet and, and take the metro ride to the beach. Or you you come with a suggestion. We we should go first to the beach, walk along it the whole length. It's wonderful. Then then enjoy the sunshine, have a coffee at the end. Yeah or a, a warm drink, a uh, delight, yeah, with, with maybe some cake. And then walk, walk back to the castle, make photos, spectacular ones, uh, especially from the Priory. And then walk down to the pier, and if it's really windy, run through the waves without getting wet. By the way, this is not possible. I would not recommend that. But uh, uh, anyway, and then afterwards, going for the famous fish and chips in Timos. Are they famous? Uh, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, so that, that is like, uh, programmed idea. Yeah, and it's, it's natural preferences. This is a, you, you will see, it's different from person to person. Some people like more organization, have a clear idea what they're getting in themselves too, yeah, and, and others may uh, be happy to go with the flow. 
I have to just uh, explore it. Yeah? Has this well to do with uh, availability of information? Uh, so the structured uh, um, a way uh, uh, that I've given you that, that has as well uh, um, maybe control or an agenda setting uh, uh, power with it uh, um, is based on previous information. Uh, so I've been there before. So this is how I knew that this is possible. Yeah? Okay, so uh, uh, fascinating observations. Uh, any questions or observations to that? Do you disagree? Is that not how it's done, maybe? A lot to take in. We, we, we have to think about it uh, as well. There is as well this other ambiguous term flying around here, environment, that, that we are ignoring at the moment. Yeah? But uh, um, th this is quite all right uh, uh, at, the, at the moment. Now, uh, with, with the environment, uh, um, we, we had that already. This is kind of a duplication. I could really kind of skip that. Did you want it anyway? So um, the temporal environment, this is again where we are back at the loop. Yeah, you see it. Now, now we are again on our travel journey. So is it our common environment or is it uh, um, an environment that changes? Now here the literature is actually quite straightforward. They kind of um, describe temporal environment uh, uh, in a grander scheme. So this is uh, generally through cycles of industry-based innovation, historical developments bringing change over time. Now, uh, um, this works as well uh, on the other way around. So um, if you actually uh, uh, work on a, uh, in a temporal environment, which you are most likely, you will see as well that uh, new bridges are not required on a daily basis. Yeah? So you may just need a bridge every 30 years. And uh, um, even if they are just built every 30 years, they sometimes last even 70 years, which is a surprise for everybody. Yeah, but it worked out all right. Yeah? And then uh, there's as well a life cycle of the organization itself. You, you may need still profit. Yeah? So um, you, you may not be able to just live off the one bridge that you, you build in your region uh, every 30 years. So you may need to look around. So this may uh, give you again kind of the setting that you have to travel around. Does that make sense? Yeah? Uh, so other factors that, that you would see as well as historic is what you described. So uh, it's, it's uh, um, uh, uh, market factors yeah, that, that may influence uh, uh, as well. So you may have a demand because a particular region or locality is growing. Yeah, or you mentioned that as well yeah, in, in Nigeria, but you may have to uh, um, go in the suburbs yeah, because there, that is where uh, um, projects are, are really going on at the moment and your company won the big spot. Uh, so we, we are again in this environment where we kind of have to move uh, uh, in, in uh, well, shorter terms to, to uh, different places to actually build it. We have as well external environments. So this is uh, um, where it gets a little bit uh, wider. This is uh, um, things that we can analyze with PEST. I have done that actually on the next slide, I think, uh, a little bit to detail. But uh, uh, again, this is uh, uh, politics, economic, technological, and sociocultural environments. Uh, um, that are pushing uh, um, aspects of globalization. Have I written that there? Yeah, I've written globalization. What, what is globalization for you? Or what does that mean? I wanted to avoid the term initially, but uh, um, what, what can that mean? What is globalization? Yeah? Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the perspective is actually uh, the opposite, but uh, you're spot on, yeah? So everything is coming to you, yeah? Uh, um, yeah yesterday you were still in your locality and uh, it was difficult uh, um, to, to find any difference, yeah? Now it's opposite. The difference is all around you, yeah? So you too can, uh, um, what is a good example? I really like food. It's probably because the lunch break is closed, but I, I was just thinking of that. So, uh, um, for example, I too can have now uh, uh, sushi, just local, yeah? This is amazing. Uh, a few years ago, I didn't know how wonderful sushi is uh, because it wasn't available, not, not a possibility. Now I too can have sushi in Newcastle, even in Time House. Yeah? That, that, that's a big surprise. Uh, but uh, um, so, so some things uh, um, will come to you. And uh, um, a globalization is really the notion that uh, mm -hmm. um, you too can have the benefits from all around the world. It, it means as well uh, um, that there is a, a, a greater diversity. There are more options available. Yeah? So you are not uh, constrained by your previous uh, local innovations. Yeah? You, you have now 
the innovation of the whole world at your hand. Yeah? But again, I, I, I really like uh, uh, change and technology. Yeah? For, for some people um, that, that uh, um, do like how they have grown up and, and uh, kind of like their local setting, it may be overwhelming. Suddenly there are so many choices that we can do. Yeah? How, how can we make a sensitive choice? Now, well, we, we can do it by price, we can do it by coolest gadgets available, yeah? something like that. So then there are new decisions to be made. Yeah? And uh, um, another external environment point, uh, it, it, it says just physical environment because I've taken that from a paper from 2000, oh, 2013, what? Oh, that is just heartbreaking. It, it should really say uh, um, kind of environment. Yeah environment, something like that. Uh, it shouldn't just be physical, it can be as well as social. You, you may know the triple bottom line. Do you, do you remember that? Some, some not. Uh, so uh, if, if you don't know yet what it is, don't worry, you will have it the next semester. So it's, it's kind of the sustainability agenda. Yeah? Ma making sure that you have uh, environmental friendly, uh, economic friendly, and socially friendly uh, solutions. Now, this is a big burning point at the moment. Yeah? Then we, we have as well the internal environment. So this is uh, uh, to say consists of those organizational um, changes that are first in line in response to changes in the external and temporal environment. So this is kind of the coping mechanism, yeah? our internal environment. This is uh, how you may have to adapt yeah, to the new environment. So for, no, I won't. I won't make the joke. But there are, there are like different uh, uh, um, cultural kind of remits that you live in different environments, yeah, and, and they shape as well how you kind of work with each other and how you greet each other, what, what you expect uh, um, from each other and so forth, yeah. So um, that, this is like first in line responses change in the external and temporal environment uh, are kind of uh, um, as well part of the organizational responses. Yeah, to, to change, of course. Um, where, where are we time-wise? We could... Oh, then we could look. Hmm. Okay, we, we have a quick look then uh, um, at the uh, uh, triggers as well that, that kind of have led to this. Um, now, I have as well, uh, we, we had that already, so uh, as, as you know, the uh, um, particular organizational operations kind of have always a history. So change is often uh, um, required based on uh, um, uh, uh, contemporary demands, opportunities, and constraints that your organization faces. And uh, with this, you, you can uh, very easily analyze it uh, um, uh, on a project level uh, under, under those kind of uh, um, four drivers. So uh, people, structure, technology, and task. Uh, um, we, we have as well had other uh, models to, to talk you quickly through it. Um, four interacting variables, uh, a change that affects one will uh, have a knock-on effect uh, to a more or a greater or lesser extent on the other ones. So if you bring in new technologies, uh, uh, you will have people that have to actually operate with them and, and realize them. And this has maybe a knock-on on the structure and as well how tasks are performed. Now this doesn't always mean that more technology is better. Think of like, uh, uh, I mean, what, what is a good example? Uh, there are many. Uh, um, so te technology can be as well, for example, that you prefer handmade shoes again to kind of the manufactured ones from the hack. Yeah? If you want nice shoes for a suit, handmade ones are very nice. Uh, if, if you have the right cobbler or a shoemaker. Or what is the right word? Shoemaker? Cobbler. Cobbler. Yeah. So it's, it's nicer. Yeah? And uh, um, the, the costs are different. In the UK, very expensive. Northern Morocco, not so expensive. Yeah? So, but uh, you, you need the plane ticket first, yeah? or order them online. Uh, that then you have to make like an uh, uh, unhydrated foot first and send it over. That's, uh, it gets very complicated. Uh, and additional logistics are required. Uh, but uh, again, so uh, um, and uh, uh, yeah, so if you use that as a um, model, you you are actually on a good uh, um, trip. Now uh, changes uh, um, 
for or triggers really for change uh, in particular in, in, in the society setting and why we now start talking actually as well about design team versus uh, construction team and, and uh, there, there's actually many reasons for it and in the UK there, there's a fascinating hidden, hidden political history behind it but in the world we, we see it really as a dominant uh, uh, phenomena due to uh, um, uh, failure customer demand now, what is really fascinating to me, and it's still a surprise, is uh, um, in Germany, uh, um, the customer demand, or as well in Switzerland, didn't hit so much uh, or so hard because uh, um, the tradespeople are kind of uh, um, required in their apprenticeship to kind of uh, learn sales skills too. So they learn to sell the services to the customers in, in whose house they may operate. And uh, um, a colleague of mine has a very controversial study, uh, uh, Andrew Dainty in, in Loughborough. He kind of showed that the Swiss trade, uh, trades never get bad reputation on jobs that they do on the client interface, or hardly ever. Why is in the UK, arguably? This is uh, his data. I'm, I'm not sure that it's true. But uh, often, uh, um, if you have uh, um, construction staff on a site, interacting with clients, they have complaints about mannerism, you, you name it. So, social competences is basically what the criticism is all about. Yeah. Supply and demand, really. Yeah, well. In what way? No. Of when stock pay them, you get custom, custom to the customer. So that's what I'm going to do. No, well, uh, the, the only difference is that they do pretty much the same work as the construction guys here on the site. <coughs> the, the only main difference is that they kind of uh, um, converse in it. So they, they I, I suppose, uh, um, they, they don't just, uh, um, what, what do I suppose? Yeah. So the, the key difference uh, um, from this data set was that they uh, um, speak very differently with the client. So they, they basically respect, I suppose, the environment differently. What was the yeah. This is pretty recent, 2012. Oh, okay. So uh, I, I don't know if this is actually true in that scale, but uh, um, his study showed that there are a lot of complaints on construction sites that are close to residential living, and that there are a lot of conflict points, be it noise and all that. But the noise is where well, they are in Switzerland, and there are no complaints. And, and the question is, where is this coming from? So uh, the, there were like three kind of hypotheses. One was that uh, um, actually a British complain quicker. This wasn't actually true. The Swiss were a lot more aggressive in complaining. And then uh, what it came down to is a uh, uh, communication interaction. So the, the workers often sold their work uh, um, to the clients. So they would explain basically, oh, I really have to do this now because uh, um, we want you to get uh, the water back on or something like that. Uh, I mean, he has just snippets of it. Whilst in the uh, um, construction uh, organization on the British sites, this would often go to the uh, site manager, and he would then respond and didn't even know what he was responding to. So it's a lost communication. Yeah, so there, there was a disconnect. Well. Yeah, so uh, it was, uh, I suppose, what the argument was that the trades people in Switzerland were actually kind of selling their jobs. They were saying, hey, this is really important for you. And uh, there wouldn't be the site manager that would be even involved. And, and uh, that, that kind of reduced it completely. So it's, it's an interesting, but it's just a different organization setting. Does that make sense? Yeah? So it, it's, uh, um, it's not that much different. Uh, yeah, well, the, the Swiss complain as well. Don't, don't get me wrong. Yeah, the, uh, I, I think that there's as well um, how, how the interface is, is handled. You, you could uh, do that as well with your staff if you have a company. You say, like, just say uh, um, what, what you're actually doing here. Yeah? Explain why, why this is important and why that needs to be done. Oh, this will be it. Yeah, I think in the UK for years and years it's been the, the, the trade people <coughs> are just getting on with the work mm -hmm. and then the clients or maybe shirt and tie people has been that divide hasn't it? Mm -hmm. um, we used to always try and encourage the workforce to introduce themselves to the client um, and like you say just explain what we're doing and why we're doing it. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, my, my colleague should have really come to your side. Yeah, uh, then, then there would have been no significant yeah. side, uh, uh, findings between the relations. A, a, a lot of companies that I've known, friends that work in, they, have, they now have a really big push mm -hmm. on the interaction between the workforce and the clients. Because if the client's happy, yeah. then 
Yeah, and I mean, they, they still live through the same noise. So they're yeah, yeah. As literally in, in the process, if you look at the noise levels, was the same. So this, this was a really surprising thing. A lot of the considerate contractor scheme as well is <coughs> informing the local residents if something's going to happen. Um, you know, just things like one side call and we know he actually goes around or drop, drop, just puts leaflets in. Mm -hmm. We're going to be doing a lot of lifting delivery this next two days um, and just try and keep the residents on, on hand. Mm -hmm. On side, I should say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But th this is a good way of doing it. Yeah. So it's, it's quite interesting, but uh, uh, customer demand can be quite quite a big one, and there are different ways of dealing mm -hmm. with it. Yeah. Then is where uh, need and expectations are stakeholders. We had that already. Uh, technology innovation, regulations, competition, change in the market, venture, expansion. <coughs> well, I, I've broken it down as well in the pestle. So if if you're interested in that, uh, uh, actually I jumped that a little bit. This is it. Yeah, so this is kind of uh, all the slides that I just went through uh, combined. And uh, um, it's an old one. Johnson and Scores kind of came up with the pest analysis. But if you look at the organization, those are it. And uh, we will look at those in details. You, you cannot read it. It's in white, isn't it? Sorry. Uh, um, the, I, I will uh, change the color in a second. And then uh, um, after our break, we will go into the detail and look a little bit at organizational structures and what it means for us as managers and our design team uh, to get our head around that. And any questions so far? Okay. Um, oh, I should always advertise as well. If you have like thoughts or, or good examples, share them as well on the discussion board because Facebook is really not working for me so far. It's, uh, um, I don't know how Alex did this, but he prototyped it last year and Facebook was uh, zooming and now I'm starting to try the Facebook end. There, there are a few discussion points, but use it as a platform. Yeah, there, there are only, I think, two distance learners that have uh, posted as well. A few of you are, are posting already. Uh, this is good. You use it for that as well, yeah, for reflection. If you have any ideas uh, or, or uh, something resonated with you, questions, post them. Yeah? It, it can allow you to extend the discussion if, if you want it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Then, uh, um, it